Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's vlog post, which is number 2309, I'd like to talk with you about setting goals. Now, everybody, if you have gone through any sort of training at all, has probably heard about you gotta set a goal. Let me tell you a story about how I got started with this when I was teaching at the Air Force's Academic Instructor School. And by the way, I'll tell you more about Academic Instructor School in a future vlog post. But I was teaching a seminar of anywhere between 12 and 15 students. And when we came to the section where we had to teach about objectives, which are basically teaching goals, I would come into the class after everybody was in there and they were sitting around the tables and I would come into the class and I'd be patting my pockets and kind of looking around distractedly and I'd say, uh, I need somebody to go run me an errand. Is there somebody in here who can go run me an errand? And inevitably there would be somebody in the class, oh yeah, yeah, I'll run the errand for you. And I'd say, thanks, go ahead. And I'd give them several seconds of silence. And most of the time the students would be, um, uh, yeah, but what's the errand? And every once in a while, there, <laughs> there would be a wag in the class. And I'd say, okay, go ahead, run the errand. And they'd get up and they'd start leaving the room. <laughs> and of course, everybody would laugh at that. But the point made here is that before you can set out to do anything, you got to know what it is you want to do. And that's exactly what a goal is. It is defining what you want to do, but it's more than that. And the entire point of this particular vlog post is to share with you one way to set your goals to be very effective. Now, you will accomplish a whole lot more in your life if you set effective goals in all the areas of your life than if you don't. You know people, and I promise you do, you know people, they kind of drift through life on the winds of chance, and they just wind up wherever those winds blow them, and they really don't ever get anything done. They wind up being drones. They wind up being consumers. They don't usually wind up being contributors unless they have somebody above them setting goals for them and telling them what to do. If you want to be not a drone, if you want to be a productive person in your life, if you want to be a productive member of society, if you want to be a contributor rather than a consumer at all times, you need to learn to set goals. Now, one of the ways that has been said in many management classes about how to set goals is to use the SMART acronym, S-M-A-R-T. And what that stands for is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Now I'm going to go over each one of those with a little bit of example so that you can understand a little bit better what it means. And if you have some thoughts about better ways to set goals or even a different way to set goals, feel free to go ahead and on the YouTube platform, get on the comments and leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you come up with something really good that we think you and I both agree, might be good for a future vlog post, I can put it in that vlog post. And of course, if you wish, I'll give you the credit for that. Also, if you want to go over to the website, davidstutorials.com, click in the upper right-hand corner and where it says, contact us, drop it down. It says vlog submissions. You can send me a private email there on that form that will allow you to send me any kind of suggestions you have, especially about, for example, goal setting. Or you can tell us either in the comments or in a private email to me how goal setting has made a difference in your life. Now let's get into what SMART goals are. Now the first letter in the acronym SMART is S, and that stands for specific. And what that means is you've got to set a goal or an objective that is on point. For example, you can't say, I want to be better at exercising. That is not specific. That is just a general goal. General goals generally don't work. You have to set a specific goal, and that specific goal might be specific in the way, let's say if it was exercise, that I want to be able to do 10 push-ups or I want to be able to walk a whole mile without stopping. That is a very specific goal. Now, besides being specific, 
the goal must be measurable. Now, measurable means answering the question, how do you know if you have met that goal? That's a very good question to ask yourself about anything, any kind of goal you set for yourself. How will I know when I got there? So, for example, if you set a nonspecific goal, I want to be better at exercising, how would you know if you achieved it? It comes down to a judgment call. When we say measurable, what that means is you need to put some metrics in place. I want to be able to do 10 push-ups. You can measure 10 push-ups. You can count them. I want to be able to walk a whole mile without stopping. You can do that. You can set that as a goal because it is something you can measure. That's measurable. Okay. The third letter in SMART, A, stands for attainable. Now, attainable means it's something you can do. If you are somebody who has been a couch potato for the last 15, 20 years, if you set yourself a goal that, I want to become a pilot for the Blue Angels. That's not really something you can expect to attain. I want to set myself a goal that I want to go to the moon. <laughs> no, that's not something that's attainable. It's something that is just kind of a pipe dream. And there's nothing against pipe dreams because all of the best things that have ever been invented in this world started with a pipe dream. So, you can have your pipe dreams, but just don't set them as goals. Now, realistic, this comes into the same area as time-bound. Those are the last two letters in SMART. R is realistic, T is time-bound. And if you are have been a couch potato for the last five years, 10 years, 20 years, and you set yourself a goal that I want to be able to run a marathon, that may not be, it may be realistic, it may be attainable, and it might be realistic, but if you've been a couch potato, it's not quite so realistic if you put a time limit, I want to be able to run a marathon next month. That is not realistic, okay? If you want to set a goal that is not realistic, it's okay, but you have to understand that it may take a long time for it to become realistic. The big consideration when you're setting a goal that's realistic is you don't want to set a goal that you cannot achieve because you will get disheartened. It will cause you to lose your impetus, your oomph, your enthusiasm for attaining these goals. Setting a realistic, attainable, within a proper time frame goal is something that you can achieve. You can see yourself making the progress and that builds up your psyche. It builds up your energy. It builds your enthusiasm and then you can set another goal. Okay, now the final letter in SMART is time bound. That basically means you put a time on it. I've heard it said before and I really kind of agree with this is that a goal is nothing more than a dream with a date on it. And that just makes so much sense to me that if you put a date on a goal, that kind of pins you down when I need to attain this goal by, okay? If you have a goal that doesn't have a date on it, well, yeah, it's really just a dream and you're basically giving yourself a lot of wiggle room to not attain that goal. So if you put all five of these criteria together, when you set your goal, you make it specific, you make it measurable, you make it attainable, you make it realistic, and you make it time-bound, you put a date on it, then these goals will inspire you to keep going to achieve them. And then when you do achieve them, it will inspire you to set the next goal. And that's how you set goals in your life. Now, there are other ways to do it, of course, probably as many as there are theorists to put these ways together, but this is one way to do it. And one more thing you need to keep in mind is that these goals can be short-term, immediate, something I want to achieve this week or this month, maybe even this year. And then you can have midterm goals, and this is what I want to achieve in five years' time, but you should also 
have goals that are long-term. This is something I want to be, to do, to achieve in 20 years. Now, for example, a good intermediate goal might be to attain a college degree. In 2002, I went to Middle Tennessee State University and I set myself a medium-term goal to get myself a degree in computers in one year because that's the only time I was going to be living in Murfreesboro, Tennessee one year and it was a limited time and then I was going to leave. So I wanted to get that degree in that one year time and I did it. I got a degree in computer science and accounting at Middle Tennessee State University in the year 2002 and I did it in one year. And it was with the help of some of the faculty members but when I met with them I told them my goal. Now there's a whole bunch of people in your life that will be your mentors in certain areas. There are people that will help you but if you convey to them, hey I've got a goal, I really need to achieve this goal in this time frame, you'd be surprised at how many people out there would love to help you get there. So set your long-term 20-year goals, set your intermediate goals, five years, one year, whatever it is. But to get to these goals, you're going to need to set your short-term goals. And these short-term goals are basically your stepping stones to get to your intermediate and your long-term goals. Final item, when you set goals, you might want to consider setting them in all of the areas of your life. You've got, for example, in earlier in this video, I mentioned exercise goals. Now, this is physical conditioning. Yes, everybody should set some physical conditioning goals, and they need to be SMART goals, right? You can't set yourself a physical conditioning goal that is not attainable, that is not realistic, uh, and it's not time bound, that it's not specific, and it's not measurable. You really can't do that because you're just kind of dreaming if that's the case. So set it in your physical area. You can set it in your mental area. Now, there are many self-help books out there that tell you how to develop your mental outlook on life on the world, you need to go out and look up some of these books. There's plenty of them, but set yourself some goals in the mental area. For me, one of my long-term goals is I want to be a person that chooses joy in life. I want to be a person that chooses to see the brightness, that chooses to see the good in people. If this is what you want to do, then you're welcome to steal my goals and make them your own or Find your own goals and set them, but set your own mental development goals. Set your spiritual development goals. There are many areas of your life in which you need to set goals. So that pretty much wraps up this particular vlog post 2309 about how to set goals, not only why you need to set them, but what they can do for you. And I've got one more final piece of advice about setting goals, and that is this. Write them down. Now, you might do it electronically, you might do it on a piece of paper, but you've got to write them down because once you actually set them down in some sort of physical, permanent form, it commits you in a way that not writing them down just doesn't commit you. So write your goals down. Next, share those written goals with somebody else and that will help you stick to them, okay? I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you will share this video with other people. Just click on the share button down there on the YouTube platform and share this with other people because there are so many people, I promise you know at least a dozen that need to learn how to set their own goals and this will help them. And if not help them, maybe it will inspire them to go look it up on their own and figure out for themselves what to do and how to do it. If you thought this was a helpful video and you would like YouTube to recommend it to other people, give me that thumbs up and it'll also help me be inspired to make more of these types of videos. If you're a subscriber, I appreciate every single one of the subscribers and I've got 26,000 right now. It amazes me. <laughs> Have I got that much to say to share with people? Well, obviously I do. But if you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will just send you an email whenever we post another video right here on David's Tutorials and the new vlog channel. Take care, everybody, and have yourself an absolutely wonderful and bright day.